Let's move on to video two, understanding lamotrigine mechanisms and titration schedules. So we'll start with some basics of psychopharmacology with regards to lamotrigine. The mechanism of action is thought to include sodium channel blockade, which leads to an inhibition of excitatory neurotransmission. Lamotrigine does not have pronounced effects on histaminergic, muscarinic, adrenergic, 5-HT2, or D2 receptors. The target dose for bipolar disorder is often thought of as 200 milligrams daily, but some patients will need higher doses, up to 400 milligrams and sometimes beyond. And if that concerns you, keep in mind that the dose range for neurologists is much higher, typically 300 to 600 milligrams. So we're pretty safe at a wide range of doses. Blood levels of lamotrigine can be checked, but are not routinely checked. The half-life is about 24 to 30 hours. It has a 98% oral bioavailability with peak concentrations in about one to three hours and the bioavailability is not affected by food. The titration schedule for lamotrigine is really important, and the mantra that we want to remember here is to start low and go slow. We'll talk about why that is when we talk about some side effects, but generally when you're titrating lamotrigine, you want to start at a dose of 25 milligrams daily, and you want to increase in 25 milligram increments, at least at the beginning. If you're doing that as an outpatient, the recommendation is 25 milligrams every two weeks. If you're doing that as an inpatient, you can increase by 25 milligrams every few days. Once you reach a dose of 100 milligrams, then you can start increasing by 50 milligram increments. Importantly, the psychiatry titration is generally quite conservative compared to our neurology colleagues. So neurologists will generally escalate the dose of lamotrigine more quickly. We're typically a little more cautious. There are some important drug-drug interactions that you must keep in mind while titrating lamotrigine that affect the schedule. If your patient is also taking valproic acid, the levels of lamotrigine are going to be increased. And in that case, you're actually going to start at 25 milligrams every other day for two weeks before going to 25 milligrams a day for the next two weeks. Conversely, if your patients are on carbamazepine or phenobarbital, then their levels of lamotrigine are going to be decreased. And in those cases, you'll want to start at 50 milligrams daily for the first two weeks and then go to 50 milligrams twice a day for the next two weeks, then increasing from there. Very importantly, estrogen increases lamotrigine clearance. So levels typically decrease by 50% within one week of starting an oral contraceptive and can increase twofold when oral contraception is stopped. During the inactive pill week for patients on oral contraception, the lamotrigine levels will rise though there is generally no adjustment that is needed during those inactive pill weeks. So it's really important for patients to let their psychiatrist know when they are starting, stopping, or changing birth control, and really important to have this conversation up front with your patients who may be on birth control. As a prescriber, you should monitor symptoms and adjust the dose of lamotrigine if needed. Let's review some key points for this section. The target dose of lamotrigine for bipolar disorder is often thought of as 200 milligrams total daily dose, but some patients will need higher doses, up to 400 milligrams and sometimes beyond. Blood levels of lamotrigine are not routinely checked. Slow titration is important because of side effect risks and prescribers should pay particular attention to other medications that might affect the metabolism, including other anti-epileptic drugs and oral contraceptives.